Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is cover a very cheap and very simple technique that can optimize flow behind rear vision mirrors. That's the side rear vision mirrors. Now, before you ask, this isn't something that's going to drop your drag coefficient by 20% or anything like that but it does have the potential to make a tiny improvement in drag and make a noticeable improvement, I would think, on some cars in terms of noise. Let's take a look. So behind rear vision mirrors on the side glass, you will often see disrupted flow. That is, the flow has separated. It's no longer flowing along the bodywork, but it's become turbulent for a small patch on the side glass. Let's take a look at that. Now, Cars vary a great deal. This car has actually got pretty good flow, attached flow behind the rear vision mirror. There's a nice gap between the mirror and the pillar, and you can see here, the flow is not badly disrupted. The tufts are pointing in the direction of flow, and that's good. The same with this car. Again, the mirror is spaced away, and you can see on the side glass, it's pretty good. And yet another car where it's pretty good, this particular one here. But take a look in contrast at this. You can see all the way around there, there's flow which is separated, the tufts are whirling around and going in all sorts of directions. Now, what could we do to improve the flow onto the glass? Now, of course, we could put on new rear vision mirrors and all sorts of things. It's a huge amount of work, especially if you have to interface the electronics of the mirror with your car. But there may be a simpler way, and that is to use vortex generators on the pillar, especially if the, there is a gap between the mirror and the pillar, to cause the flow to reattach itself on the glass more readily. Vortex generators, we're used to vortex generators from the back of the Evo Lancer. Uh, they've got little fin-shaped vortex generators that promote better flow attachment on the rear glass window. And here, I'm using air tab vortex generators to give really good flow attachment, as you can see by those wall tufts, down the base of the rear window and onto the boot or trunk lid. But these are much, much too big to be using on an A-pillar or anywhere near a rear vision mirror. And these are obviously specific to that particular car. So how can we cheaply make some of our own vortex generators that are small, can be put in place and potentially change and improve that flow? Well, here's how I did it. I went along to a local store. I found some very small door wedges, rubber door stops. And as you can see by this photo where I'm holding one of them, they're really, really tiny. Now, I took a knife like this, and I sliced off the end of each of these little wedges. They had a little uh, sort of rubber puller so you could pull the wedge out. And then I sliced them longitudinally to end up with little wedges of rubber that look like this. They're easily stuck into place with double-sided tape. And because they are rubber, they'll even conform to slight changes in shape, slight curves, as you'll often find around that area of the car. So what car did I decide to do it on? Well, in this case, I did it on my wife's car, a W212 Mercedes. And it wasn't just picked at random. I had a feeling that there was a bit of flow separation on that window. Uh, when it rains, you can see that the, the raindrops aren't just sliding along. There's some turbulence you can see in the pattern of the raindrops. But of course, it's easy enough to find out what's going on. You simply wool tough the car. Stick little bits of wool around the area of interest. Here I'm using orange wool. And because you're doing it on the window, you can actually see it as you drive along. All you do is glance across and you can actually see the pattern on of the wall tufts. Now, where did I put the vortex generators? I stuck three in between the mirror and the door pillar, or the door molding, the sail panel, as it's sometimes called. Now, you can change the angle of those little vortex generators. I found it best, in fact, to have them parallel with the ground. Uh, but I did start off with them angled a little bit differently. In some cases, you'll find that they will work better if they're slightly angled. But in this case, best results were achieved just by having them along the longitudinal axis of the car. Now, what do I mean by best results? What change was I actually seeing? Well, I, I drew on the glass from inside with a whiteboard marker showing the pattern that the tufts were actually adopting. Now, look firstly at the solid lines. The solid lines show the behavior of the tufts before I put the vortex generators in place. And where there's a V shape like that, and like that, and like that, 
That's because the tuff was fluttering back and forth within those axes. So that's fluttering a long way. And a fluttering tuft is a bad tuft. A fluttering tuft shows that there isn't good attached flow. So that was fluttering, that was fluttering, that was fluttering, that was fluttering, and so on. So what do the dotted lines show? The dotted lines show the behavior of the tufts after I fitted those three tiny vortex generators. And you can see immediately that one, they've changed in their angle. They're much more aligned to the longitudinal axis of the car, the direction we want the airflow to be going. And secondly, you can see, because I haven't drawn any Vs in the dotted lines, the tufts were much more settled. They weren't fluttering nearly as much as they were before I put the vortex generators on. Uh, this one, there was no difference uh, with or without the vortex generators. And this one, there was no difference with or without the vortex generators. But you can see the others settled down. And the one that was really noticeable was this one, which went from wild movement within that range to rock steady. And if we look at where the vortex generators are outside the car, you can see they're there. So they are influencing flow. Now, I don't know about you, but I find that pretty exciting that you can stick some tiny little items in a certain place on the car and then immediately see a changed pattern in those tufts, indicative of a changed pattern in the airflow. Now, is it going to revolutionise uh, your drag coefficient? No, it won't. I doubt it's even measurable. Even in a wind tunnel, I doubt it's even measurable. Um, but is it likely to reduce noise? Yes, it is. Uh, it is turbulence, uh, separated flow, which often causes aero noise, wind noise. And I think on some cars, this has the potential to really drop uh, aero noise coming from that side glass. Did it make a big deal of difference in terms of noise on the Mercedes? No, it didn't, but it runs pretty thick glass too. So there's a lot of factors that will actually influence what outcome you get. But so easy, so easy and so cheap to try and see what results you can actually get. How big were they? I did these measurements. They were 29 millimeters long. They were nine millimeters wide. They were nine millimeters high. But I honestly doubt that you have to replicate those measurements. I think anything more or less like that is likely to work. The book's called Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. It's out now. It's available from good booksellers or Amazon. Thank you.